From April of 2005 to May of 2007, Chuck Liddell ruled the UFC's light heavyweight division. Chuck Liddell was the first major mixed martial arts star around the world. The most popular athlete in the UFC. Everybody knew who Chuck Liddell was. During that same period, the middleweight division belonged to Rich Franklin. Very impressive performance by Rich Franklin. Rich Franklin was the king of that weight class for quite a while. You can't say enough about this guy's heart. At UFC 115, two of MMA's greatest warriors finally face off. This is a great fight between two great fighters, two legends in the sport. You got the Iceman with his aura and his ferocity. <laughs> and then we got Rich Franklin, the math teacher, nerd that can fight. It's a great matchup. It doesn't matter who's standing on the opposite side of that octagon, I'm just, I'm not gonna lose. I can't wait, I'm gonna knock him out. Light heavyweight Hall of Famer Chuck Liddell battles former longtime middleweight champ Rich Franklin. Kickboxing legend Mirko Krokop exchanges blows with knockout machine Pat Barry. And rising welterweight star Carlos Condit battles undefeated hometown hero Rory McDonald. The countdown to UFC 115 starts now. UFC 115 marks the return of Chuck the Iceman Liddell. The Iceman! Taking on veteran and former UFC champion Rich Ace Franklin. Rich Franklin! Oh my goodness! Oh, beautiful. How so good was that? The ticket sold out in 41 minutes. the fastest sellout show that the UFC has had. And down he goes again. I think the fans are excited because they know the kind of fights that myself and Chuck put on. And he goes down. He's down. I'm excited to get back in the ring. It's been a long time. Down he I can't wait. It's been 14 months since Chuck Liddell entered the octagon, by far the longest layoff of his career. But the 39-year-old former champ has remained in the spotlight as a contestant on Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars is a good way to get an audience that is definitely not our demographic. He jumped to the chance. He doesn't mind putting on ruffles and a tutu because he knows that anybody laughs at him, I'll kick him in the head. Chuck was eliminated in week six, but he gained a new fan base. I had a seven-year-old lady get in an elevator. Oh, you're that nice boy from Dancing with the Stars. I'm like, nice boy. I don't hear that one much, but all right. The show also kept Chuck in shape, allowing him to enter camp near his target weight. It's been a great camp. Chuck's stronger now than he's ever been. He has a girlfriend that's not into partying. She's into working out. The lifestyle that we live together now is just one that's really healthy and happy. Beautiful hikes, the sunshine, our families, our friends and doing the right things and feeling great about it. She's laughing at me the first time we went to a vegetarian place. Because I'm like, I'm this place. <laughs> this is this vegetarian. You want to get the salad and then get the kale side? Instead of 
eating so many pastas and carbs, moving to more greens and vegetables. You know, not as much of the red meats. You guys realize you're arguing over kale today, right? You're arguing over kale. I don't even know you anymore. This day's here. Hold on, hold on. Heidi has been a big and positive influence on Chuck's spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. And I've never seen him as happy or as strong. I mean, he's like a beast. easy for him. Just don't let me go home to Heidi. <laughs>
more work on rhythmically breaking him down with feints and um, a lot of jab work. When I don't even expect Rich to hit him with the jab much, but it's still going to be a, a very highly used offensive weapon. You know, we have to make sure that, that I'm razor sharp in, in what I'm doing, that there is not any moment of timidness in my motions. Come on, baby. Chuck has been susceptible for low kicks at times. He doesn't seem to like kicks too much against Keith Jardine. He struggled with that. Chuck's fighting stance is a little wider, so he's, he's going to be heavier on that front leg. We're emphasizing the times when I can take advantage of that. I've been kickboxing for a long time. I'm not really worried about the low kicks. We're going to be doing a, a lot of lead side movement and uh, using jabs and feints and all that kind of stuff to set up the inside kick. Man, he's chopping down those leg kicks. Again to the oh, midsection that network. Hurt him. He's hurt badly. That body kick. It's all That's it. over. While Rich Franklin has downsized to a single city, Chuck Liddell is now splitting time between his hometown of San Luis Obispo and Los Angeles, where his girlfriend and his jiu-jitsu coach reside. Headed down to L.A. to see, uh, see my girl and uh, uh, work with Scott Epstein uh, on some of my jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Chuck has a good wrestling background. He's always been a solid wrestler. He hasn't used it a whole lot in his fights. And I think that's one aspect of his fight game that's, that's overlooked. Maybe it's something that he's going to throw into the mix. Maybe he sees or thinks he sees a hole in my wrestling that he wants to capitalize on. I want to see Chuck drag him to the floor and, and punish him and put him out, you know? I don't even want it to be ground to pound. I want it to submit him. Perhaps my jiu-jitsu might be a little underrated. This fight in particular, I've started training with the gi again. I really think it's uh, helping me kind of tighten things up when I'm doing my no-gi grappling and everything. I'm not concerned about Chuck. I don't, I don't have to worry about what Chuck's doing. I got to worry about what I'm doing. I feel like I'm, I'm in the best shape I've been in a long time. You better be ready for me. I'm, I'm coming hard. He's too strong. His timing's so good right now. His conditioning's so good. I just don't see him losing this fight. Turn it on now. In round one, things are going to get mixed up quite a bit. We're both going to be moving around, and I think that uh, as the time progresses, I tend to accelerate as a fighter. He's one of the most disciplined guys in the game. And uh, Chuck tends to slow down. He's a nice guy, but I can't wait. I'm, I'm, I'm going to knock him out. Coming up. Pat Barry is the perfect fighter to find out where Mirko Krokop stands in 2010. He's got devastating leg kicks, vicious punches. If I hit you, you're gonna fall down, no matter who you are. Before two of the UFC's greatest champions square off, another MMA legend will enter the octagon. Whoa! Former Pride Grand Prix champion Mirko Krokop, responsible for some of the sport's most dramatic knockouts, oh. aims to take down emerging star Pat Barry. He's very much like Mirko, explosive, dynamic striker. Actually, Pat's style was modeled a little bit after older Mirko fights. Growing up, before I even started training, we had a list of the top five guys we would never fight, ever. Yeah, Krokop was the fifth guy on the list. He will be a dangerous opponent. He wants to make a name, bigger money that he's making right now, and uh, I am perfect chance for him to do it. He is a legend. He is dangerous. He is as dangerous as he's always been. Because now my name is being used in the same sentence as his. Pat Barry! Years before he stared down Mirko Krokop's high kicks, Pat Barry dealt with an equally intimidating foe, his mom. We had just an innate fear from my mother. Like, it was just, this is a fact. This, I've, I've fought a lot of guys, but there was just a fear that came from this one bullet-piercing knuckle point. Every time anything went wrong, just give me, give me one. Just, just one? Just give me one. Just one? Give me one, right? If you tell that story again, <laughs> you're gonna get the knuckle. You looking at me? I can, I'm looking. Oh, you're looking. Okay, Look I'm looking. at me. I'm serious. I'm looking. I mean, I'm really serious. It's right here. I can go straight in, yank the heart out, the whole works. <laughs> My mother gave us the world by herself. 
Dad passed away when we were younger. It was all her and three kids, man. It was awesome. My mom truly is 100% superwoman. Can be professional, can cook dinner, can kick your ass. You name it, she can do it. And when you see Patrick at the end of the fight say, Mama, I'm coming home, in the tears. Mama! Mama! I'm going home, man. It's because for years, you know, I was mom and dad. I love my mom. She is why a lot of my lifestyle has turned out to the way it is. Pat has always been our little athlete. From the time he was a few months old, he was more agile than most of the other kids. Patrick started out walking down the hallways on his hands. Hey, Drew. Right. How far do you think I can get? You can get to the 20. To the, to the 20? Yeah. I'm going to get three and then fall out dead like that fight camp. Come on, bro. He looks like crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Between the gymnastics, the kicking, the spinning, and Pat does it all. I would like to believe that I'm the most athletic heavyweight in the world. I was a gymnast as a kid, bowling team in high school. Captain of the bowling team. He just was never interested in traditional sports. In ninth grade, something stupid, he could like standing still punt the ball 60 yards. If what, free running or park four, whatever it's called, if that was big back then, he would have been the king of it. Pat and Andrew have destroyed a many lampshades in this household and other households, kicking and flipping and being Ninja Turtles. All I ever wanted to do was be a ninja. That's it. I wanted to be Tong Po from Kickboxer, Sagat from Street Fighter. I idolize these dudes, bro. I collected weapons, ninja stars, swords, bow staffs. I had them all stashed throughout the house. So, you know, if anybody ever broke into the house, I could, you know, do a roll, flip on the ground, reach behind the sofa and think and shoot them in the head. In the real world, Pat reached college with no formal martial arts training. When I was 23, I was in a study hall one day and I looked up kickboxing. I called Russell Jones Kickboxing. He picked up the phone and said, Russell Jones Kickboxing, where we kick everybody's ass. And I was like, I'm sold. Pat and his friends converted an empty amphitheater at the University of New Orleans into a makeshift training center. Dubbed it Olympus. This is the mountain of the gods where we all come and this is where we trained. And we would be out here from 10 o'clock to 3 in the morning training nonstop. Karate guys, taekwondo guys, wrestlers, boxers, kickboxers. We had kickboxing matches out here versus guys from other gyms from all over the state. I get these phone calls at 3 in the morning. Uh, Ma, don't panic, but Pat's getting stitches in his eyeball. I'm like, what? Patrick! I started having amateur fights, and I was just destroying people left and right. I had like 11 or 12 first round knockouts. I get a phone call from Myron Godet asking if I would like to go to Amsterdam to meet Ernesto Host. Ernesto Host, Mr. Perfect, is the greatest kickboxer to ever live, ever. And he took me under his wing, became part of Team Perfect. And that's when my kickboxing ability really just skyrocketed. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's like someone's chopping a tree down. The dude is a Mozart. The dude put on a pair of gloves and within a couple months was as good as his first coach. He's a fight prodigy. Man! Outstanding. The bar has to believe. Yeah. From 2002 to 2008, Pat Berry used his devastating leg kicks to compile an 18 and 6 record as a professional kickboxer. Oh, Barry just chopped that leg. Oh. But Pat was nearly broke and far from home. You get lonely out there. Many times throughout my career, I've been five seconds away from coming home and hanging it up. There's nothing in this world means more to me than my family. My family is my power source. 
In 2008, Pat moved from Amsterdam to Milwaukee to train with former kickboxing world champion Duke Rufus, who convinced him to try MMA. Making his professional debut. You know who I am. You know what I am. MMA is the wave of the future. This is where it's at. I was a zero and zero in MMA versus a guy named Mike Delaney, who was like 28, 12. He had something like 40 or 50 MMA fights, pro fights. And I kicked him in the leg three times in a minute. He kicked so hard. And he laid on the ground and said, please no more. I think he broke his knee. Uh... My second MMA fight, I fight a guy with 75 professional kickboxing matches, bell rings. Ooh, a nice powerful kick. kick. I kick him in the leg twice. And he lays on the ground and says, no more. Big check. I was like, what? This is Christmas. Third fight, I fight a guy who's got like 60 pro fights. I look straight at his leg and throw a high kick. One second knockout. I threw six kicks, three fights, more money than I've ever made in my entire life. In December of 2008, Pat made his UFC debut. This kid is all about life. The first walkout in the UFC is completely nuts. There's so much energy in a UFC crowd, like you get chills. Barry likes to throw right low kicks. That's the huge That's leg kick. Nasty leg kicks. Yeah, I gave him three really nasty low kicks. There's the leg kick again. Man, he's hurt. Man, yeah. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. It's over. And the last one collapsed his knee inwards. He just turns around and says, you know what? Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I don't need to see how bad this is going to get. I would like to walk for the rest of my life. Man! He actually made his opponent air tap from getting low kicked. It was a sick low kick. Five months later, hey, moving very fast for a big guy. Barry took on six foot four Canadian Tim Haig. kicked him in the head and punched him in the face. Guess who didn't die? Tim Hag. In my head, I could not figure out why is this guy still standing? I just, I'm Pat Barry. He's got it. There's a lot of trouble here. He's gonna tap it. It's all over, man. Everybody needs a wake up call. That was probably the greatest thing that's happened in my MMA career so far. He didn't touch a pair of gloves or shin guards the whole summer. He wrestled and did jujitsu. I hadn't embraced jujitsu or wrestling until that fight. His ground games improved drastically. Pat's next fight was scheduled for UFC 104 in Los Angeles. Shortly before the event, a bad business decision left Pat in dire financial straits. My bank account was zapped, gone, nothing. Everything was coming up, rent, electricity, cell phone bill, gas. In the days leading up to the fight, Pat subsisted on a diet of white rice and ketchup. I could have asked mom for money, but if every time you're about to hit the ground, somebody catches you, there's no reason to work hard. I put myself into that hole, I was gonna dig myself out of it. Compounding the pressure, his opponent, Anthony Hardock, was a former teammate and mentor in Amsterdam. He's one of the best there is. We weren't equals. It was him and me, and I was looking up to this guy. We walk straight across the ring, and I hold my hand out, and I do growl. He growled at me and wouldn't touch my glove. There was no way of losing that fight. Oh, man. And again, Hardock goes down hard. I was too fast. I was too strong. Everything he did, I could see what he was going to do five seconds before he did it. Oh, Barry looking to finish. Oh, Pat that's Barry it. has won. That was the greatest fight of my life. Huge, huge victory for Pat Barry. Wow, look how emotional Pat Barry is. Sorry for being a little emotional, but that made everything in the world to me just now. I'm going home, man. We leave the arena, and Duke runs up to me in the hotel. He's like, dude, we just got paid, and I'm like, 
yes, this is the most money I've ever made in my entire life, man. He's like, you got the fight of the night bonus. But not only that, you got knocked out of the night also. Including the bonuses, Barry's total payday was $134,000. I'm like, man, that's pretty gangster. <laughs> you know, you got no money in your account. You go to this fight, you're living on your per diem money, and you go kick this guy's ass like, like he didn't have a care in the world. I was able to go home and pay off the hole that I put myself into, put aside some for taxes, and put aside a small part for a retirement plan. <laughs> Everyone thinks it was seven, eight minutes to make all that money. It took eight years of sacrifice, eight years of being on the road alone, eight years of being away from my family. All the phone calls I've had to make home crying, all the nights I've sat up, strung out, worrying, am I going to wake up one day at 40 and realize this is all a joke? I have given my entire adult life to this. I've been dreaming about this since I was a kid. and. I know that it doesn't come easy, so I've got to go above and beyond. In the last year or so, I saw him turn into someone else. Hell, hunter, hunter. Yeah. Complete warrior. The strongest I've ever seen him psychologically, emotionally. He has complete control. He's starting to hit his peak right now. When that bell rings, it's over, no matter who you are. And you might beat me, but you're going to know you are in a war with somebody. Up next. It's going to be probably the craziest stand-up war ever in uh, UFC history. Is he man or machine? I swing punches and kicks to knock body parts off. This is going to be a fun fight. Oh, I can't wait for this. In 2006, legendary heavyweight Mirko Krokop capped his illustrious career by winning the Pride Openweight Grand Prix, knocking off Vanderlei Silva and Josh Barnett to capture the crown. Mirko Krokop is a legend. The guy did everything that he did over in Pride in Japan. The way Mirko describes his kick is right leg hospital, left leg cemetery. And if you've ever seen him fight, you know why. Some oh, oh, I kick it down no. to Igor. One shot, boom, to the dome, go to sleep. That's his style. Merkel Krokop doesn't go to the ground. He won't be shooting, he won't be going for takedowns. He wants to stand up, he wants to bang toe to toe. Is he man or machine? Two guys who don't want to go to the ground. Two guys who have never attempted to take anybody down. Oh, man, I can't wait for this. This is going to be a fun fight. And Barry, rather die than put on a boring fight. It's going to be the craziest stand-up war ever in uh, UFC history. They're both technical, but they're also brutal. He sees the blood. He's going for the kill. Some oh! In the world of kickboxing, Crow Cop means someone has gotten hurt tonight. Crow Cop! Oh, 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 no! I don't want to sound uh, arrogant, but I'm a great talent for this. You know, I have physical possibilities to do so many things. Those high kicks are extremely powerful. But I'm also Pat Barry. Oh, and if I hit you, you're going to fall down, no matter who you are. He looks for the finish. Yeah, he's hurt. Yeah. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. It's over. Overseas, they all think America sucks at kickboxing. They don't want to lose and get out leg kicked, out head kicked, out punched, out whatever by an American at a game that he's supposed to be the best at. Boxing, that's the only thing that he's doing good. He'll avoid clinch definitely or ground. He'll try to stand on his feet and do, do his boxing. You don't have to worry about my double leg takedown and my submission skills. Like, but if I hit you, you're in trouble, no matter who you are. You don't want my job. 
Let's go. That's a human. Whether you're Crow Cop, whether you're Tyson, whether you're Godzilla, if I hit you, you're going to feel it. I swing punches and kicks to knock body parts off and to retire fighters. That's what I do. My organs ache when he hits me, I swear to God. Imagine getting hit by a truck. I've hit people to where it's gotten me teary-eyed because they won't wake up. I've got a guy in New Orleans who introduces himself to me every time I see him. He's going on six years now. If you get leg kicked by him, you're going to feel like you stepped on a landmine. Everybody's got a story about the one time that they were hit so hard. I hit different. I hit scared. He's wrong if he thinks that he will beat me. Mirko, if you're supposed to be the baddest kickboxer of all time, let's just make a little pack right away. We aren't going to the ground. Mirko Prokop is the champion. Come on, stand up and bang. Let's go. Let's give him the war everybody wants. I want to shut the mouth of the people who said that I'm old, that my time has gone, and I just want to prove that they were wrong. Big shot. I'm much more experienced than he is, and I'm more complete fighter, and uh, I'm hungry too. He has had 10 times more fights than I have. Upper crush finds a spark, and down goes Golden. He's been in wars that are going to be remembered throughout the rest of time. He's still human, and everybody falls down if they get hit hard enough. I will do my game, he will try to do his game, so we'll see. Here comes Prokop, continues to unleash the fury of Hades with those kicks. I can beat this guy, absolutely, in the first round. Coming up, the UFC's youngest fighter takes flight. I look at McDonald and I see uh, a young up-and-comer, you know, not so different from where I was just a few years ago. Carlos is going to put him in his place and let him know that he's going to have to grow a little bit before he can get in the cage with uh, a Carlos Condit. A lot of people sleep on Rory, and at the end of the night, they're the ones sleeping. Rory, the water boy, McDonald! At 20 years old, Rory McDonald is the youngest fighter in the UFC. But the native of Kelowna, British Columbia, already has 10 fights under his belt and 10 wins. Rory McDonald with the armbar! At 16, he turned pro, and he was making grown men in their 20s cry. So, yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a ride for him. Rory's early success earned him an invitation to train with countryman George St. Pierre, the reigning welterweight champ. The biggest thing I take out of it is confidence. Every time that I can compete with the top level guys, I just get more and more confident in my abilities. Nice. There's not a single person that has sparred with Rory that didn't walk away saying, holy <laughs> that kid can fight. <laughs> Diamond with the kick. Nice, nice takedown. There's not too many guys in the world that have his striking mixed with his grappling. And uh, I think he's going to open a lot of eyes in his next UFC fight against Carlos. Carlos Condit was also a prodigy, turning heads at a young age. Fourth or fifth grade, he got involved with wrestling and discovered his first love. Uh, it would have been easier to take Christmas away from Carlos and it would have been to not let him wrestle. When I was about 15, 16, I started getting into mixed martial arts. I learned quickly. I have the body type to, you know, master a lot of the moves. You know, having blood smeared all over your face and, you know, getting hit in the lips so hard that, it, you know, it tingles. It kind of felt good to me. Carlos's dad is the chief of staff to Bill Richardson, uh, the governor for New Mexico. His mother lives in Portland. She's a nurse. I guess you could say Carlos is the 
black sheep, <laughs> as it were. But he definitely went his own way. He came home and advised me that he had a gig. He said, well, I have a fight in Juarez, Mexico. Uh, so that was a bit of a shocker, and you know, I didn't quite understand it. At a very young age, I felt like a warrior. I was a warrior. That's kind of what I was destined to be. Carlos won his first eight fights, five by submission and three by knockout. At 22, with an 18-4 and four record, he was invited to join the WEC. My first fight with WEC, I won in the first round pretty decisively, so they decided to uh, give me a title shot against John Alessio. I was stoked. Nice shot from Condit. Alessio, he talked a lot of man. Condit on his feet, throwing the knees. So I fought him from bell to bell, and I took his will. I, I made him want to get out of the cage. John Alessio's in a lot of trouble right now. That's it! That is it! Carlos Condit, the natural born killer, ends it! That was huge for me. He's in that armbar! He's in there deep! Carlos defended his WEC welterweight title four times before the division folded. I was WEC champion for about two years. I still feel like a champion. I don't feel like I ever lost that title. Carlos In his second UFC fight against Jake Ellenberger, Condit's warrior spirit saved the day. Carlos Condit and Jake Ellenberger. I got off the blocks a little bit late, and you know, he capitalized, and he came out and he put some leather on me. Condit with the right hand again, once and twice, three times. I felt like my eyeball exploded. Condit is in huge trouble here, wow! I don't quit though, the ref didn't stop it. As long as I was still conscious, as long as I was still friggin' breathing, I was gonna win. You know, you'd think Condit would be in trouble for the rest of the fight, but he is coming back. Unbelievable, showing the heart of a champion. 10 seconds remains in the fight. We go to the judges' scorecards. What a fight. Now, after hand surgery forced a nine-month layoff, Condit finds in his way an opponent traveling a familiar path. I look at McDonald and I see a young up-and-comer, you know, not so different from where I was just a few years ago. I don't think that he's fought anybody of my caliber up to this point. In the last four years, I've been fighting the best competition in the world. I'm the better fighter at this point. This is my lovely contribution from Carlos, if you can get a close-up on the bruises. He kicks hard! We've heard it all before. Rory's fought in a lot of guys that have had, you know, two, three times as many fights as he's had, and every time those guys have been either knocked out or submitted. I was gonna put him in his place and let him know that he's gonna have to grow a little bit before he can get in the cage with uh, a Carlos Condit. Oh, big shot from Condit! I've got twice the knockouts and twice the submissions he does. Rory's won by knockout, ground and pound, triangle choke, rear naked choke, pretty much every single way you can win a fight. A lot of people sleep on Rory, and at the end of the night, they're the ones sleeping. Nobody's ever knocked me out. You can crush my body, but you can't touch my spirit. You know, I will keep coming no matter what. This dude's tenacious, but he ain't never met a dog like me. Otto again. Potty is still in trouble. I believe he's still trying to find out where he is. And now he's back with knees. Unbelievable. He's right about his spirit being very strong. I watch his fights, and, you know, he just keeps coming, keeps coming. It's unbelievable. But when my hands land, it's lights out. There's no fighting back. This is going to be the fight of the night. I have no doubt about it. Have you seen my finish ratio? I finish people. I finish people. I'm going to finish you. Fight's over. That's it. What an arm ball. That is it. Are you kidding me? I'm going to be the best. Perhaps we're seeing the future here tonight. Carlos is just another stepping stone. I will be the winner of this fight. Carlos Khan is going to dominate Rory McDonald. Absolutely. Where did that come from? This is an absolute war. 